Well, now take down your fishing pole and meet me at the fishing hole. I can't think of a better way to pass the time of day. But when I'm alone in the half light of the canyon, all existence seems to fade to a being with my soul and memories. And the sounds of the big Blackfoot River and a four count rhythm and the hope that a fish will rise. Rod Mob. This is The Splash, your Northern California fishing podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Scott. And I'm Sarah. We're coming to you from the Rod Mob Treehouse here in a tad bit chilly Portola Valley. It's Friday, October 26th, and this is episode 32 of The Splash, your weekly Northern California fishing podcast. Today, we've got Delta trolling legend Clive Wands, an update on the hot link hot action out of Monterey, plus Troy from Clear Lake Outdoors joins us, and the Soul Man is back with a saltwater report out of Fisherman's Wharf. And of course, we'll cover all the rest of the best fishing this week for Northern California. But first, the headlines. Here's Sarah with the latest headlines. There was a report in the San Mateo County Times this morning that the National Marine Fisheries Service has released their recovery plan for Central California Coast Coho Salmon. The Central Coast Coho is a regional subset of the Pacific Coho that avoids big river systems in favor of creeks and was once abundant in streams from northern Mendocino County to Santa Cruz, but now it's on the verge of extinction. Back in the 1960s, there were about 56,000 fish in Central Coast Creeks, and the Fisheries Service estimates there are maybe 2 to 3,000 today. The Fisheries Service has designated 28 creeks and rivers as containing core populations for coho recovery from Mendocino County along the coast from Fort Bragg to Marin and in San Mateo and Santa Cruz counties. The recovery plan is a 2,000-page document laying out recommendations from establishing hatcheries and felling trees into streams to help push water into stream beds and scour out deep pools for juvenile salmon. From the Times article, it sounds like there are some obstacles ahead for the plan. One of them is going to be informing and convincing landowners along the watersheds to take steps to help the fishery. Kellex Nelson, executive director of the San Mateo County Resource Conservation District, is hoping the restoration plan can serve as a call to action and capture the public's attention, and says the coho needs a California condor moment. Kenny Priest reported in Fishing the North Coast that results are in from the DFG's first preseason crab quality testing. The testing took place on Monday, October 22nd, and they tested crabs out of Eureka, Trinidad, Crescent City, and Fort Bragg. Kenny had the word from DFG senior marine biologist Pete Kelvis, who said the crabs were a little lighter than they hoped. Kenny reports, A typical year will find the meat content at around 20%, with the theory being that crabs will add 1% of meat a week and reach the 25% mark for the commercial opener of December 1st. According to Calvis, crabs tested from Crescent City were at 15.5%, Trinidad was 16.5%, Eureka came in at 15.5%, and Fort Bragg tested at 18.4%. They don't know yet whether there will be a delay in the commercial season, but Calvis said the crabs will need to put on some weight in the next six weeks. The next round of tests will be November 4th, so we'll have a pretty good idea after that. Hopefully there's still a lot of crabs left over from last year's record haul, which could play a part in the lower weight of the crabs as the competition for food could be greater. Recreational Dungeness Crab Fishing across California opens on November 3rd. For details on the regulations, check the DFG website at dfg.gov. And be sure to check out Kenny's Fishing the North Coast page on Facebook for his latest picks and reports. Stay on top of the latest fishing action. Subscribe to Rod Mob Podcasts on iTunes. It's free, and you'll always get the latest episodes. There was a fatal shark attack on Tuesday at Vandenberg Air Force Base in Santa Barbara County. A 39-year-old surfer was bitten in the upper torso at a popular beach. After examining the tooth marks, experts are saying it was likely a 15-foot great white who probably mistook the man for prey. The beach, along with two others nearby, were closed for three days after the attack, but no more sightings have been reported. But questions are being raised as to why there's been an uptick in sightings and attacks in recent years. 
Some say there's been an increase in the white shark population due to better management of the commercial fishing industry, but no one knows whether the current estimate of 300 great whites living in the Pacific is an increase, decrease, or steady number since there aren't any counts from before fishing pressure. Another theory is there are just more people out surfing, swimming, and kayaking, so naturally there would be greater chances for sharks and people to interface. But experts also say that with the rise of smartphone usage, we have more ability to record shark encounters than ever before. So what we're seeing isn't anything out of the ordinary, that these sightings fit into seasonal migrations and activity, we're just having better exposure to the encounters. No matter what's behind the increase in sharks and people crossing paths, one thing the experts agree on is that white sharks in general don't pose a serious threat. Dr. Chris Lowe, a marine biologist at California State University Long Beach, told the Christian Science Monitor for their report, more people are killed driving to the beach, and yet we all take that risk. A few episodes back, we reported on a petition that had been filed asking for the Clear Lake hitch to be listed as an endangered species. And this week, the man who wrote the petition addressed the Clear Lake Hitch Council. The Lake County Record B reported that about a dozen people attended the meeting this week, and Jeff Miller from the Center for Biological Diversity, the author of the petition, talked through the process of adding the hitch to the endangered species list and answered questions from people voicing concerns about how this could affect things like bass fishing and agriculture. Right now, the petition is in a 90-day review period where the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the California Fish and Game Commission review the petition, and if it's accepted, it moves into a one-year status review where agencies gather data from groups and other agencies that could be affected by an endangered status or can provide information on the current population. There will be another public meeting on December 3rd where the Clear Lake Hitch Council plans to bring in experts to provide further information to the public, including stakeholders like native tribes, the agricultural community, and of course, the bass fishing community. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash the rod mob. Well, there's a report in the Chronicle this week that a professor for the University of Alaska, Fairbanks, is working on a project that she hopes will bring freeze-dried salmon to the table for astronauts. Alexandra Oliveira is an associate professor of seafood chemistry at the university's Kodiak Seafood and Marine Science Center, and she's doing research, thanks to a grant from the Alaska Space Grant Program, to see whether freeze-dried salmon could delight the taste buds. Her thinking is it could be good for astronauts because it's so nutritious. There's a pretty long testing process before NASA will consider a food. According to the Chronicle, the food has to be stored for a year, then there's microbial and chemical analysis, and then another study to see how the food behaves when stored in different conditions. Professor Oliveira is eight months into the storing process and will be conducting the final tests soon. For this project, they're using Alaska sockeye salmon from Kodiak Island, which was donated by the Kodiak Regional Aquaculture Association. And the salmon was cubed, infused with spicy seasoning. Oliviera says they like spicy foods in space. And freeze-dried to be served either dried or rehydrated. Well, that's it for the headlines. Now for some tight lines. Here are the latest reports on the best Northern California fishing. Starting with saltwater, on the north coast, last week ocean conditions were tough, so not much action out of Eureka, but Kenny Priest reports in Fishing the North Coast that the weekend weather may be decent enough for folks to get out and try for some halibut and one last shot at rockfish before the season closes on October 31st. In Bodega Bay, we saw a report from Western Outdoor News that the new sea angler nailed limits of quality rockfish all last week, except for Thursday. On Thursday, they went out after albacore instead, from 32 miles off of Bodega, where 60-degree water pulled up. Ten anglers put 30 albacore on board. Outside the gate, charter boats seemed to stay away from the salmon last week and targeted rockfish. On Tuesday, 16 anglers aboard the new Seeker out of Emeryville nailed limits of rockfish plus eight lings out at the Farallon Islands. Attention is focusing on next week's crab opener. Check out local party boats for rockfish crab combo trips for both the Farallon Islands and the Marin Coast. We spoke with Don Franklin of Soul Man Sport Fishing. Here's his report. Uh, Weather-wise, we're starting to go into our fall pattern. We're starting to get the... uh, a little bit of some wave action getting generated. Um, obviously, we get the pattern where before the storms, um, we tend to get pretty good fishing with good weather. 
during the storms of void. And then after the storm, we get the lull, and the fishing starts to pick up again. And we're definitely in that pattern, so people need to be aware uh, going offshore, around the bar, and with the conditions that we have. What kind of trips you got coming up? Uh, we're scheduled for the last two weeks. We got a couple salmon trips available, some room on those trips. Um, our shark fishing has been excellent right now. Sharks are starting to get into spawn mode, so it would help if uh, people uh, get into those big females, put them back, let them go, so we still have a great fishery to continue. And starting next week on Saturday the 3rd, we'll run our first crab and rockfish combo. To book a trip with the Soul Man, go to www.soulmanfishing.com or give them a call at 510-703-4148. Salmon are still being found off Half Moon Bay, if you want them, and there's still plenty of great rockfish reports. Limits are common with good quality, but the weather has kept some boats in the harbor. In Santa Cruz, the good rock fishing continues. The best reports are coming from natural bridges to Four Mile, and some good-sized sea bass and halibut were caught this week near Moss Landing and Pajaro. And we checked in with Chris's fishing and whale watching out of Monterey today. They've been bringing in limits of rock cod, some giant squid, and ling cod this week. Rod mobber Michael Kraft went out with Chris's on Sunday and reported a great day fishing for lings on the Star of Monterey. Tomorrow, Chris's is running a live bait ling cod trip, and just a reminder to reserve your seat now for one of Chris's crab and rock cod combo trips coming up the first week of November. Give them a call, 831-375-5951, or check them out on Facebook for more info. In the San Francisco Bay, good striper action continues up along the Marin shoreline and near the Brothers and Whaling Station. Still some reports of halibut being caught. Salmon at Cal City has been hit or miss. And there's plenty of sharks and rays around the pump house, if that's your thing. Sturgeon reports in the bay have been quiet. Great striper action continues throughout the Delta. We're seeing a ton of great reports. 30-plus pounders were caught last week. Mudsuckers, bullhead, and shad have been the top baits. Captain Art Restoro posted on the Rod Mob Facebook page yesterday that he had limits of striper on his boat fishing at a Montezuma Slough. Captain Art says if you're fishing from the bank, try the right side of the big bridge. Sturgeon fishing is also good around Middle Grounds, the Mothball Fleet in Pittsburgh, and Ruben Machado posted on our Facebook page a shot of angler Ed Wright with a 110-pound sturgeon he caught on grass shrimp and ghost shrimp near the Rio Vista Bridge. Anglers are still nailing salmon from Rio Vista up to Freeport. Rod mobber Armando Nunez reported in on Wednesday that he caught a nice 30-pound salmon in the Freeport area. And Kevin Carroll had fish on Sunday on the Sacramento River just below Walnut Grove. John and Jonathan Politis also shot us a report on Sunday. They said, had another good day fishing out of Vieira's Resort. Had to fight some wind and salmon out there. The bite happened fast as we left the launch. We had our two within an hour as well as getting another miss strike. A lot of grass in the river as well. Gotta check them hooks if you want to catch Chinooks. And today, we spoke with legendary Delta troller Clive Wands for an update on trolling in the Delta. Well, I had a tough day yesterday. We caught fish up to around uh, probably nine pounds, our best fish. And uh, we were around Collinsville, uh, trolling deep. Most of it was 13 to 15 feet. We were using uh, deep diving Missouri's in chartreuse. Uh -huh. uh, all of our fish coming chartreuse colored uh, deep diving Missouri's. Uh, right now... I like the shallow trolling, but I can't get anything going because we tried a couple places, and the grass is bad. Now, uh, last week, I had my wife out. Uh, let's see, that was last Thursday. And uh, she kept saying, well, we're not going to get any fish. We fished two hours. I said, hey, we're not going home. I don't take skunks. Uh, anyway, we went into uh, Broad Slough, and we caught 11 fish in about two hours. Anyway, most of those was 13 to 15 feet, right in that area on a grass line. What about the weather? How's that been? Uh, the weather wasn't bad yesterday. You know, it was a little overhang in the morning. Uh, no wind, just a little ripple in the water. Tides were good and everything. I like to fish, when I'm trolling, I like the softer tides. Mm -hmm. And we were starting to build up a little bit, you know, get, going into the uh, uh, bigger tides, which, you know, that's going to be happening on the full moon next week. Uh, you can still catch fish then, but, uh, you know, right on the turn of the tides. And that's what we done yesterday. Now, yesterday, 
every bite we caught all of our fish first thing in the morning and then I fished the rest of the day without a without a hit. It was very unusual. You know, I just couldn't find any fish. But they're down there. Just gotta do a lot of searching. Thanks, Clyde. Have a good weekend. Okay, bye. You too. Bye. Now let's look at the lakes. Still plenty of bass in the one to two pound range at Shasta Lake, and rainbows and browns are up to about 20 to 40 feet, feasting on shad. The DFG did a trout plant last week, and we're still hearing the best spots for trout are on the Sacramento and McLeod arms of the lake, Dry Creek west of Shasta Dam, around the buoys near Bridge Bay, and under the I-5 bridge. Shasta 24-7 reports humdingers, white hoochies, and small chrome spoons are doing the trick. For bass, work the crankbaits, plastics, and spinnerbaits from up near the surface to 25 feet down along rocky outcroppings and points. Word is most fish are around 15 to 20 feet deep. Fly fishing's been good at Lake Almanor. Fishfirst.com reports good numbers of trout seeking cool water from the tributaries. Float tubing the Hamilton Branch, North Fork of the Feather, or other tributaries are producing good numbers of big fish, stripping minnow patterns on a sinking line. Surface temps in the low 60s are bringing rainbows to the surface, feeding on pond smelt. Watch for birds feeding on dying pond smelt. They're a good indication of concentrations of feeding fish. For an update on Clear Lake, we spoke with Troy at Clear Lake Outdoors today. It's a little tough up here at Clear Lake right now. You know, we're, we're finally transitioning over to the fall. We got a little cooler weather, but uh, still a lot of bait fish in the water. Um, water levels are still pretty low, and, you know, quite honestly, there's not a lot of grass or a lot of things to hold them. So it's a little tough. The fish are schooled up and, and relating to the bait and move around following the bait. So... Uh, uh, we look for the bite to get a little bit better when the weather cools off and the the water temperature cools off and and the the bait should start to ball up and uh, and it, it, the bite should get a lot better than it is. But uh, right now, um, top two producing lures are uh, you know a, a lipless crankbait like the LV500 and Ghost Minnow Color has been really good. And also the uh, four and six inch trash fish uh, swim bait, which are based on the hitch. The uh, LC hitch, color, light hitch, and blueback herring have been really working really well, too. And then uh, how about uh, any any reports from the, the tournament? I mean, you know, was that a good good turnout? Yeah, the last tournament we had was the, uh, the American Bass TOC last weekend. And, you know, the winning weight was, uh, it was under 50 pounds. I believe it was like 48 and change. Um, so that's not indicative of a real super good bite. Um, it was a, still pretty tough for a lot of guys. I think there was like 20, 23 teams that blanked on the first day. So, <laughs> wow. yeah. Um, the second day of that derby, uh, there was two nine pounders caught, but the overall consensus was, you know, it was really tough. And the guys that were up here, they were pre-fishing and they had some of those school, schooled up fish located did well, but, uh, most everybody else struggled pretty pretty hard. So hopefully the next report is, uh, you know, it's wide open. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Hit up clearlakeoutdoors.com or call the shop at 707-262-5852. We want to hear from you. Got a fishing report, a tip, a review, a comment on the show? Drop us a message on the Rod Mob Hotline, then listen for it on an upcoming episode. 662 Rod Mob 5. Lake Berryess is on NorCal Fishing News Best Bites this week for the good topwater bite that's been going on there. The bass fishing will get even better as the water cools down. Tim Good of NorCal Fishing News says anglers have been getting 30-pound sacks on one-ounce Blade Runner buzz baits, and the spoon bite is very good. Western Outdoor News recommends covering the water with Topwater or Lucky Crafts BDS3 in shad patterns to locate feeding schools in and around shallow grasses in the shallow bays and creek channels. The bass bite at Lake Orville has gone from good to awesome. Guide Ron Gandolfi has been putting clients on up to 70 fish per day on drop shot worms and topwater. Western Outdoor News reports flatter pockets and points in the North Fork and Middle Fork are producing 12 to 14 inch fish down to 25 feet deep. At Lake Folsom, last week we reported fishing pressure for the landlocked king salmon was light and there was a good bite. This week, king salmon action is still on in front of the dam and temps have cooled so bass are transitioning into a good fall bite.
fall trout plants started Monday at Collins Lake. Half of the load are catchables and the other half are trophy-sized fish. Weather conditions are ideal with cooling trends this week. Shore fishing is expected to pick up as a result of the cooler weather and the best bait to use is power bait, power eggs, or worms. Trollers are still using shad-type lures since the threadfin shad have already started their annual fall trek. Another system trollers are using often is a threaded night crawler with a speck of power bait on the hook. Fall trout plants will end the week of Thanksgiving and should give anglers a great chance of catching trout all winter until the spring planting begins again around the middle of February. In the East Bay area, October 31st is your last day of the year to fish at San Pablo Reservoir. Trout are biting chartreuse and spring green power bait from the shoreline near the main recreation area, as well as Sandy Point. And broken back fire tigers are best for trolling. Bass are hitting on spinners and swim baits. Crappie and bluegill has been great out near the boat launch area using jigs and red worms. Catfish have been biting on anchovies and chicken livers. Last week, Chan Saturn of Oakland caught a whopper 22-pound catfish while fishing from the shoreline at the boat launch area. At Lafayette Reservoir, NorCal Fishing News reports that some anglers are getting limits within a couple of hours. The DFG planted 1,000 pounds of trout on Tuesday for a total of 4,000 pounds over the past two weeks. The catfish and bass bite has slowed. Los Vaqueros Reservoir Marina opened a week ago Monday, and they've planted 3,000 pounds of trout over the past two weeks, so shore anglers are getting a good bite there. And the staff at Lake Del Valle report that catfishing is your best bet right now. Top baits are anchovies, mackerel, and sardines. The trout bite is improving, and they appear to like panther martens, cast masters, and power bait in various colors. Black bass are hitting plastic worms or jigs. Smallmouth bass have been much more active. They're hitting on poppers, topwater lures, Zara spooks, or buzzbaits. People have been catching and releasing their limits of smallmouth bass in the 2-5 to five pound range. The staff at Lake Chabot say that catfish are still being caught, though they estimate it'll slow down here soon once the weather drops even more. They're still being caught over in Half Moon Bay, Bass Cove, and over by the dam. The lake is back on regular trout plants. They've had 2,000 pounds of trout from Mount Lassen planted within the past month. Trout fishing is starting to pick up a little mid-morning. Last week, several nice-sized trout were pulled out trolling topwater lures. If you're fishing for trout, it's best to go to the clearest parts of the lake, which are by the dam and Half Moon Bay area. If you're trolling, some of the best lures to troll with are fire tiger rapalas, cast masters, and mira shads. And when the trout start to bite more frequently, chartreuse and rainbow power bait will be your best friend. There have been four plants in the last three weeks at Shadow Cliffs, and the trout bite is picking up. NorCal Fishing News reports that Wilson Gonzalez and Sons of Alameda caught nine trout averaging four pounds, so action is good and fish are large. And the Coyote Bait and Tackle Striper Derby continues at San Luis Reservoir. The shop reports that the Jumbo Minnow Bite is on at the Big Lake. Fishing from Romero's to the Trash Rack seem to be where most of the stripers are schooling. Also, topwater is just starting as the shad boils have begun. And spooning's producing when the bite starts to slow. The four bay has been better too. Boaters with live bait or throwing a jerk bait are catching stripers 18 to 25 inches. Shore anglers are doing the best with pile worms, blood worms, shad, and anchovies. And in the mother load area, at New Malonis, Glory Hole Sports reports bank fishing for trout has been slow, but should pick up as weather temps cool. Trollers are getting a few limits in the main lake and in the mouths of major creek arms. The fish are feeding on three to five inch shad. Bass fishing is good. Try using shad patterns, deep diving crankbaits, and deep rib baits to get to the depths they're feeding at. The catfish bite is fair. Rob Morris of Arnold recently caught a 10-pound, 4-ounce lunker on anchovies. Trout plants continue at Lake Amador, and shore anglers are seeing a good bite. Crappie are being caught off the docks at night, and spinner baits and topwater poppers are producing some bass. Fishing season wraps up at Pardee on November 4th. Trollers have been scratching out some trout at 20 to 30 feet on the wire and top lining in the Sugar Bowl and South End areas. White power bait is best for shore anglers targeting trout. Bass fishing is good upstream and in the river arm and around the coves near the river inlet. Keep us posted. Share your catch, tips, gear reviews, and more on our Facebook page. Facebook.com slash RodMob. Trout plants are coming to Lake Comanche to get ready for the third annual Trout Derby coming up November 3rd. Trout catches have been reported near the bridge and near the edge of the peninsula by trollers using naked nightcrawlers and needlefish in about 25 feet of water. 
Bait anglers are having success with rainbow or chartreuse colored power bait. 4,000 pounds of catchable trout were planted Thursday at Lake Don Pedro in the Fleming Meadows area. The Fresno Bee reports trout are scattered, so if you're trolling, you'll need to key on shad balls to locate the schools. Look for bait balls in Middle Bay and Jenkins Hill areas. The cooler water from this week's storms will force shad into tighter groupings and higher in the water column. Bass will be around the shad schools from 40 to 50 feet. And there was another trout plant this week at McSwain Reservoir. Stephanie Powell at the McSwain Marina reported rainbows to 7.5 pounds have been landed. Bank anglers reported near limits at the brush pile with cast masters, while trollers scored pulling crawlers behind a watermelon sep sidekick or silver gold cowbell flashers to 20 feet from the floating restrooms to the second fence line. In the Sierras, Lake Tahoe fishing has been good. Rainbows have been running in the 1 to 6 pound range, but an occasional 10 plus pounder has been caught. Max are in pre-spawn mode, so jigging is recommended. Fish are in 120 to 180 feet of water. And fishing is still good at the west end of Donner Lake. Jigging the deeper humps and ledges around China Cove and the Loch Levin Lodge is producing some nice max. The fall bite is on at Loon Lake. The lake is only half full, but the word is that the trout are hitting on everything. And rough weather has affected the bite at Pyramid Lake. Trollers are getting some nice fish, but the numbers have dropped off. In the eastern Sierra, there was snow this week, but Sierra Drifters Guide Service reports a warm snap is forecast, and the weather is looking good for the weekend at Crowley Lake, and great fly fishing opportunities are coming up. The trout bite throughout the region is just going to get better. Top picks right now are Crowley Lake, Kerman Lake, the Virginia Lakes, and Silver Lake. High Noon Trout tipped us off on Facebook yesterday that an 18-pound, 1-ounce brown trout was caught Wednesday at Silver Lake on a rapala tossed from shore. We hear it'll be on the cover of an upcoming issue of Western Outdoor News. On the rivers, there was enough rain up north earlier this week to get the Smith River going, but Mike Koopman told Fishing the North Coast that the average was about a fish per boat or less. Mike says this is the first big rise of the year, but it's still only predicted to get to nine feet, which isn't very big. We'll see how many fish are around once we get that first big flushing. Kenny Priest reports the rain pushed salmon that were holding in the Eel River estuary upriver, and anglers trolling spinners and castmasters have been catching a few fish. While most folks headed over to the Smith River, guide Tony Sepulveda from Greenwater Fishing Adventures reported today that he stayed put on the Klamath and found some late-season hogs. Tony says it's a beautiful thing to catch big kings without another boat in sight. The flows are low on the Trinity River, but should improve with the storms. Steelhead fishing is improving. A 12-pounder was reported last week, and reports of 3- to 8-pounders are coming in from below Lewiston. And the Pitt River continues to fish well as trout are feeding up for the winter. October caddis hatches are still going on the upper sack, and the fly shop in Redding reports fly fishing has been productive. And the Sacramento River from Redding to Red Bluff is still excellent for trout fishing with steelhead mixed in. This good fishing should last well into November. In the Sacramento area, salmon fishing slowed down quite a bit this week, but late fall numbers are expected to build any time. Striper action is good on the Petaluma River and also the Napa River. A 51-inch striper was reported, and the sturgeon bite is turning on in the lower Napa. The fall bite was put on hold earlier this week on the Truckee River, with snow keeping anglers and guides off the river. But we read today that it was t-shirt weather and the snow was already melting. And in the eastern Sierras, Sierra Drifters Guide Service reported Thursday on their Facebook page that it was gorgeous on the Owens River with good fishing using streamers. Tom said flows kicked up a bit in the morning, then settled down and was steady the rest of the day. One of his clients caught a nice bow on a size 14 punk perch. Woo! Fish! Woo! All right! Catch of the Week. This week's podcast artwork comes from Jonathan Politis, who is fishing out of Vieiras and quickly got into some good salmon action. Jonathan says, looks like wearing the Rod Mob shirt paid off with this catch. Thanks, Jonathan, for another great report and for posting this week's Catch, catch of the, the week. week. And hey, we've been hearing from quite a few folks. Their Rod Mob tees are bringing them luck. We can't guarantee that, but if you want to get your hands on a cool Rod Mob t-shirt, check out our brand new online store at rodmob.com gear. It's poll question time. Okay, so we spend a lot of time scouring the internet so we can bring you all the latest reports. And last week we asked, how many fishing websites do you visit each week? Well, 40% of you said you keep it simple. You have a few you visit. 40% said you mostly just search for what you need. You don't visit many sites regularly. And 20% admitted to being a complete 
fishing website junkie. So we have it pretty good here in Northern California with access to a lot of great species of fish. This week, we want to know which is your favorite to catch. Salmon, trout, largemouth or smallmouth bass, stripers, or maybe something else. Let us know. Head on over to rodmob.com to cast your vote. All right. Well, we got to make sure we mention the Turkey Day giveaway. There's still a couple weeks left to enter to win a cool prize pack full of swag and gear for fishing and hunting from Military Hunting and Fishing, Hot Huntress, Perifa Cup, and more. Just head on over to rodmob.com and click Turkey Day Giveaway to enter. Upcoming events you won't want to miss. Here's the Rod Mob calendar. Recreational crab season opens statewide on November 3rd. And November 3rd and 4th, the Future Pro Tour comes to Sacramento and the Delta. Also on November 3rd is Lake Comanche's third annual Trout Derby with $4,000 in cash and prizes awarded to 20th place. There will also be 100 tagged fish valued at $500 or more each. November 9th through 17th is the Pogo Striped Bass Derby at the VFW Hall in Antioch. To purchase tickets, contact Steve Martinez at 925-783-8401. And November 17th and 18th is the second annual Striped Bass Rattle Trap Only Catch and Release Derby held by Lauritsen Yacht Harbor in Oakley. For all the details on these and other upcoming events, check out our events page at rodmob.com. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks again for all the great reports and for supporting the Rod Mob. We launched our Rod Mob store this week, so check it out at rodmob.com slash gear. We have cool shirts for both men and women and weather-resistant decals available. And don't forget, we'll send you a free Rod Mob decal just for sharing your latest catch or report with us. Post to our Facebook page or shoot us an email at fishon at rodmob.com. If you're enjoying the podcast, please subscribe to us in iTunes. It's free and new episodes get automatically downloaded to your iPod or iPhone, so you don't have to check to see when there's a new update. And if you're an Android user, you can get our podcast in the Stitcher Smart Radio app. Just grab Stitcher from the Android market. It's free. Open it up and search for Rod Mob. Also, show your support for the show by giving us a good review on iTunes. It really helps us out. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. And until next time, keep us posted. Rod Mob. Nobody covers fishing quite like the Dan Patrick show does. <laughs> yes, yes, McLovin. So if Mike catches a trout and he eats it, is it cannibalism? <laughs> <laughs>